Hi, here we are with my second video. Um, you can see the interface is no different. I've put in a new ROM, uh, flashed it, and followed the guide that was on one of the forums. I'll try and include the links in the description. I uh, just want to show you a few things now since doing the updating of the firmware. Um, again, I've got the emulators on one screen if you swipe um, you can see in the bottom here this is the Android market it's probably tricky to see on the camera but you can just make out market so now I can actually access the Google market uh, first of all I'll just turn Wi-Fi on I still think the Wi-Fi is a little bit sluggish on this thing Sometimes it seems to pick it up, other times it doesn't. Um, okay, it's saying I'm connected, so we go back. And I'll connect to the market. You have to set up an account with Google the first time. It doesn't take too long. Um, and there you go. You can see the Android market. So if I go into apps, I did read somewhere that you couldn't download apps through the unit, but I seem to be able to do that okay. Um, I'll just go into one of the categories and try and download something so you can see it. It seems to work alright. It's just nice being able to actually access the Android market as opposed to having to find the APKs yourself. the free apps, free games, sorry. I just click on the drag racing game. Hopefully it's not too big. So if I download, okay, it's asking me to agree to the terms of the Android market, so I just accept it. Um, okay, I'll just accept and download. So it's just obviously showing you download, it's 8 megabytes. If I drag the screen down I can see I've got one active download at 3%. So I'd like to try and work out how much we're downloading at. And it looks like we're getting about well, 20 kilobits a second. Considering I'm on a 20 meg broadband line from Virgin. And it's not very good at all. So it's either the Android market's very busy or... The unit's very slow. I uh, want to just come out of that. No. It will still download. Just want to get back to the main screen. I've updated the N64 emulator. So if I go show you a game that I showed you last time. Zelda 64. And hopefully now you'll see a slight improvement. There's a definite improvement with this emulator. I haven't played the game, but before there was artifacts all over the screen. They seem to have been tidied up since. So I would say it's a definite improvement. The one thing you can't do with the N64 emulator is obviously pick out uh, the controls for the analog stick separate from the D-pad because the D-pad and this analog stick, what appears to be an analog stick, is actually just a up, down, left and right stick. It's not analog at all. And the other thing that's a bit disappointing is when you map the buttons find this button here, which is the back button on the Android system, is exactly the same as this button. So if you select this button to be a function and this button to be a function, they both cancel each other out and just do whatever you set them to be last. So it's a bit of a pain. So what I tend to do is set this button 
or a game control button. I generally set it up on my Xbox or what the SNES used to be, A, B, X, Y, left bumper and right bumper. And this button tends to not do anything, it just simulates what this one does, so I don't use it. So I'm not going to actually play the game, I just want to quit, just wanted to show you that. One thing that happened to me yesterday, which was a bit strange, is it seemed to lose its internal memory. It just couldn't access the NAND memory. I had to reinstall everything, so I had to reflash it to the original firmware, and then I had to root it, and then I had to do the upgrade. It took me about an hour to get it back to where I had it before. Um, I'm not sure if there is a way of making backups and stuff. Uh, it does appear that it will save to Google servers and back up, but it's something I haven't done yet. Um, but it's pretty much, I believe, like a, a phone Android system now. Um, I do have a Galaxy S in the family and it is very similar to that. So um, I've downloaded the Tiger MAME emulator. It runs some games that the MAME for Droid emulator doesn't, and vice versa. The only thing with the Tiger Arcade is it's not full screen. So don't be surprised if I show you. Don't be surprised that the games aren't full screen. It just runs well. It's just definitely smaller. You can see it's kind of got a small screen inside the big screen. Whereas the main for Droid is full screen, or you can set it to be full screen. Uh, and that's that. I'm not going to play it, just wanted to show you. Uh, see what we're doing with our download, considering it's 8 megabytes. Is that 82%? Hopefully I can talk long enough to just show you that it does install and I don't have any problems. I'm not sure if it's because of the firmware or not, that some people are having issues with it not downloading and installing, but it seems to work okay for me. Go into the on live again. Is is reliant on the internet and the on live app just doesn't work very well for me. Um, and that's about it all I can show you really. Hopefully you can see it does look definitely better than it was before. Um, the battery seems okay. I've not had many issues with the battery. I played Crime Fighters for a couple of hours at work the other week and still had 50% of my battery. Um, so I'm quite pleased with it overall. It's a nice little unit. I was disappointed that the NAND memory thing went yesterday it just wouldn't connect to my computer and see anything so I had to go into debug mode and reflash it okay all my downloads are done I don't know if you can see at the top it says installing drag racing so there we go drag racing has been installed there we go so hopefully give you a bit more of an insight into the little unit. I definitely recommend buying one if you're into the old arcade games. And the old N64 SNES Mega Drive emulators run perfectly, absolutely flawless. So if you like the old gaming, it's definitely something I would buy again. I just would prefer a capacitive touchscreen and a definite analog stick separate from the controls. Um, but all in all, for what you get, it's very good. Thanks for watching. And if I find anything else out, I'll post it and I'll try and include all the links in this video for you to find the firmwares and stuff to do the download. It's very easy, it only takes about 10 or 15 minutes and I'll try and put instructions in there on what you need to do. Cheers.